Hey, what's up champions? So in this video series, we are going to talk about the three realms of confidence. That's right, the three realms of confidence. This whole entire program is centered on self-confidence because it's all about building up the self. But when we look at confidence in its totality, we also have to look at what we call others' confidence, realm number two, and then the installation of confidence, which is realm number three. So we're gonna cover all three of these within this video series. So really tune in to what we have to say. Again, there are the three realms. We're gonna talk about first, self-confidence. Then we're gonna talk about others' confidence. And then we're gonna talk about the installation of confidence. We're gonna talk about that from two different perspectives, okay? So let's continue on to the next set of videos here. So as you already know, champion, self-confidence is from the inside out. That's the trust in your abilities, your qualities, and your judgments. And that's what this entire program is really focused on. So a lot of the information you're going to hear is coming from a self-confidence standpoint. Now we have this top level, again, confidence, and then we break it into three different areas, self-confidence, others' confidence, installation of confidence. Here, we're talking about self confidence. And again, all the other video series, especially looking at the 12 areas where you can gain more self-confidence, really take a look at that series because we start to identify where we can really get more strength in the certain areas that we live about in our entire journey through life. So self-confidence, talk about the self, and then we break those into 12 different areas where you can improve your self-confidence. So again, that 12-part video series is really gonna hone in on certain things, and when you look at the, the uh, confidence assessment that you're going to take as well, that will also expose some other opportunities where you can gain more self-confidence. So again, self-confidence is what it's all about. And a lot of the tools, the techniques, and the tips we're going to be giving come from a self-confidence standpoint, but we also have to address the other two realms. Self-confidence, remember the word self, remember this is from the inside out, you trusting in your abilities, your qualities, your judgments. What is it that you bring to the table? What is it that you can really exude when it comes to being more proficient in your profession, when it comes to being more of a better person for relationship standpoint? And when you look at self-confidence, it, it really permeates over all aspects of your life. So that's why these modalities are in extremely important. But self-confidence, remember, it's the self that we're talking about, the self that we're going to utilize, the, the information, the content, and the conversation is going to really stem from a selfish standpoint. Talk about self-confidence, okay? Now let's talk about the next one, which is others' confidence. Okay, if you are a leader, then you really want to listen up to this one in the next video as well. Not only is self-confidence really important for you as an individual, but if you're a leader, you also have to display a certain level of confidence to your teammates, right? Now, when we talk about others' confidence, what we're going to do here, what you have to do as a leader, you have to be able to assess the level of confidence in someone else so you can trust in their abilities, their qualities, and their judgments. So let me give you an example. Let's say you're a leader of a team in a department or a leader of an organization. You are at some point in time going to disseminate tasks throughout the other team members. And if you don't have the confidence or you can't assess the level of confidence that they can carry out what you are telling them to do, then you're gonna have some reservations, of course, right? And so what you have to understand how to do is to assess the level of confidence in them pertaining to their abilities, their qualities, their judgments. Now, what do they bring to the table? That's something that you will also have to assess. And hopefully when you hired them or when they became a team member, you did your due diligence there. That's important because having the opportunity for someone else to display their confidence so you can understand where they are will totally determine the level or the, the amount, I should say, the amount and even the level of difficulty for the task that you're going to give them. A lot of their confidence will be embedded in their know-how, okay? So again, a lot of their confidence will be embedded in their know-how, their ability from a professional standpoint. 
But what happens with confidence, and it always works this way, is that confidence from the outside areas of a profession or a core competency tends to permeate other areas of a person's life. That's just the natural way that confidence exudes itself. It will always show itself whether it's personal and professional. And since they have a level of ability in their abilities, their qualities, their judgments in their profession because it's associated with some sort of training and know-how, you have to be able to assess that. So that's where the other's confidence come into play. We'll be diving more into that as we go through this journey through the coaching program to talk more about other's confidence. There are certain techniques, tools, and tips that you can utilize to assess someone else's confidence. Remember, we always say your confidence speaks loudly even before you utter your very first words. And so if you know how to read the body language, right, and learn how to really intently listen to certain words and how sentences are structured, are they utilizing power words? Are they utilizing low power words in order to, to give us an idea of whether or not they're competent? Again, high power words tend to instill confidence. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. High power words tend to instill, instill confidence. Low power words tend to negate the confidence piece. So as a leader, it's all about you assessing someone else's ability so you can trust in their, in their, in their abilities and their qualities of judgment. You trusting in their abilities, their qualities, their judgment for things that you're gonna tell them to do, either, either ask them to do or mandate that you do from a professional standpoint, okay? So that's others' confidence. So now let's talk about instilling confidence in someone else. That's the first iteration of installation of confidence. We're going to separate the videos um, talking about these two different aspects of installation of confidence. So instilling confidence in someone else. There will be times when you as a leader, whether you're a parent on the personal side or whether you're a boss or the, the department head or CEO, whatever that may be on the professional side. You're going to have to encourage someone else. You're going to tell them to do certain things at some point in time, and they may not have the confidence. They may not trust in their abilities, their qualities, their judgments in order to do this certain thing. But you know, because you've already assessed their level of confidence, that they have the know-how. Now they have to have the willpower. And this is where the authentic self, the mind, the will, the imagination, the emotions, the intellect really comes into play. So it's not about, all the time, it's not about you as a leader telling them you must do this, but also there are times when you must coach them in order to do a certain thing. A lot of times we already have the answers, but if we don't know how to bring the answers out of that person, if we don't know how to get them to see the answers for themselves, then that's where the coaching can break down. And that's where the installation of confidence doesn't really have its really, very strong, it's really it's stronghold. So we have to understand how to facilitate, how to increase, how to bring up, how to instill confidence in someone else. As a leader, that is an important skill. I'll say that one more time. As a leader, whether you're personal, as a parent, professional, as a boss, you have to understand how to instill confidence in someone else. Everyone, no matter how powerful they are, what level of position they have in the organization, what level of academia they have achieved, there needs to be some encouragement because we are not all perfect when it comes to confidence. We can increase it, we get to the point where it's unshakable and limitless, but there are still times that we have, may have to even encourage ourselves, And then also we have to instill the confidence in someone else so that they can perform what you have assigned for them to do, okay? So that's the installation of confidence and in, instilling it in someone else. Okay, so now you really have to pay attention leaders in this video, we're going to talk about the installation of confidence in someone else so that they can trust in my abilities, okay? So this comes by way, or let me give you an example. If you are a salesperson and you're selling a product or service, or you are a boss and you have someone who's looking at you as the person that they are going to follow and look for you for direction, what you all have to do is instill confidence in them about you, okay? You're going to have to instill confidence in them about you. So how do we do that? Well, that comes by way of audio, visual, kinesthetic. 
right? But just to talk about some of the things on how we produce mastery. But audio, visual, kinesthetic, them seeing you do certain things can promote confidence. Them hearing you say certain things can promote confidence, right? So especially if you, what they hear from you is authentic, if it's certain and it has a strong level of commitment using those power words, they have a better understanding that you are the person that they want to follow. You are the person that they want to buy the product or service from. So if you're selling something, you're gonna to have to instill confidence in that person regarding your company or your ability to do that certain thing. And that comes by way of, again, how they see you from an audio, visual, and kinesthetic standpoint. If you look the part from a visual standpoint, that's even half the battle. Why? Because your confidence speaks even before you utter your first words. That's gonna be something you're gonna hear me repeat over and over and over throughout this entire program. Your confidence speaks even before you utter your first words. So when someone sees that you look the part, if I'm coming to you and we're talking about this program and I'm coming to you in raggedy, torn clothing, then you're gonna have some sort of reservations on coming into the program because you don't see me as that part. But if I'm sitting there and I have erect posture, I'm walking with power and I'm standing with power, I'm sitting and, and everything else is all in alignment before I even talk with you, you've already made a judgment about me, right? That's just the way it is. There's no fighting it, there's no getting around it. That's just the way it is. So it behooves us to understand that when we show people from a visual standpoint, audio and kinesthetic, hearing audio piece, when we show people from a visual and kinesthetic standpoint, they are really going to start making the judgments. And what you say then has everything to do with you instilling confidence. It's going to, it's going to solidify the confidence in them that you are the right person for the job. And so when we talk about confidence, we have to have all three areas focused and understand how to improve and increase in all three areas. Self-confidence, others' confidence, and installation of confidence, and that comes twofold. So that's the continuation, well, that's the, the, the culmination, I should say, of this video series. I really am looking forward to sharing more with you regarding confidence, installation of confidence, others' confidence, self-confidence, all the things that we have as we continue this journey throughout the Champions of Confidence coaching program.